guess what just came out in Korea and that I ordered immediately? Imagine, come on, Bookquester not reading a Rick Riordan book? Well, that's just criminal. And here it is, the final piece of the Trials of Apollo series. Hello, fellow Bookquesters, it is I, am the Bookquester, and today I have this awesome book, The Trials of Apollo, Book 5, The Tower of Nero by Rick Riordan himself. And well, let's get right on to it. Now, the book starts with the usual intense start that I think everyone expects from a Rick Riordan book. When traveling through Washington, D.C., no one, one expects to see a few snakes in human clothing. Still, I was concerned when a two-headed boa constrictor boarded our train at Union Station. Well, everyone knows what's gonna happen. Big battle? Well, maybe the snake isn't evil? Uh, that's... what? okay. And then they find out that Imperial Guards Germany, Germany, and they are just guarding the train, all of the trains in fact, and they are capturing, well, our dear Lester or Apollo and ne and Meg. That's not good, is it? But thankfully, one of them is on our side. A warrior, a woman warrior named Luxe Lugaselwa? Is what I wrote down here. Luga Selwa. Okay, Celtic names really get me, apparently. And basically, she helped them fake that they had escaped, and they managed to run away. And after a brief stay in Percy Jackson's house... I know, right? Oh my god, he, he comes out. No, he doesn't. Too bad, it's just his mother and his little, little, little sister. Imagine if Estelle has, has demigod powers. That might be an interesting book. Estelle Jackson. And then they go to Camp Half Blood. There they recite the prophecies, bits of prophecies that they had managed to hear after the infinite rippling couplet thing that they had heard in the last book, The Burning Maze. And those two new lines are the, the son of Hades, Cavern Runner's friend, must show the secret way unto the throne. And they had also heard a line called and yeah, they had heard that line, and so, and then they hear, a dare reveals a path that was unknown. A dare as in, maybe Rachel dare, the high priestess of Delphi right now. And so, they go to Rachel's house. And they find her, and they know she's part of the prophecy, and together, they go into Nero's tower. But whoa, 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 before that, of course, Will and Nico. Will Solace and Nico D'Angelo. And Nico, cavern runner's friend, right? Who will find the secret passage. Well, basically, Nero is about to burn down New York City with a huge amount of Greek fire. That's probably not good. And there's like this system in which Greek fire comes out and goes boom and then destroys the entire city. And that Greek fire dispenser, I will call it, it's underground. And guess who can sabotage things underground? As I wrote down here, a what? <laughs> I'm a Greek. I'm a Greek god nerd, and even I don't know this name. Troglodyte. Wow, Rick Riordan must have dig deep to find this one. These guys are. By the way, this is my hastily jotted notes, and and they're cave runners. They're really, really fast, and they can do really, really fast. Basically. They're dwarves in Greek mythology. Wow, they exist? That's so cool. Well, anyway, let's get on with this. So, they are super fast diggers, and they are excellent sabotagers for anything underground. And so Apollo manages to inspire them to help them, and so, with the troglodytes about to sabotage the dispensing system, he goes up, and Meg was Meg, and they pretend surrender. The plan was that Lugs. I'm just gonna call her Lou because that's what Meg calls her. The plan was that Lou would come to her, and they would just free her, free them from the prison, and they would together destroy um, Nero's fascists. I don't really know how to say that. 
And that's kind of like the source of his immortality. If that is broken, he's just a normal mortal and you can kill him. Easy. So yes, that's the thing that we need to destroy, and it's on the same floor as the prison. So that was their plan. Oh, but Nero's two steps ahead, and he cuts off Luke Swell's Lou's hands and put Apollo and Lou in a prison, and Meg is taken away into a room and trapped. Yeah, things aren't looking too good for us, but we have a plan. When the stupid, stupid Germany opened the door, then we managed to knock him down using, literally using the door. Because it's an automatic motion sensor door, and it, when the guy comes in, it just goes up. Basically, they made him slip, they made him fall down, and when he tried to get up, the door shut on him, and yeah, it crushed his ribs and his breastplate, breastplate and chest plate, and basically, they decapit <laughs> They made him, they neutralized him, and they used him as a bridge to get out of the room. They jammed his body and the door, in the sliding door. The sliding door of death, I will call it. And so they just get out, and Lou goes to get Nero's facets. How would she get that? And Apollo goes out and tries to find Meg. And then, just in the nick of time, the entire camp of half-blood is here, with Chiron leading them, white stallion mode, longbow in hand, and with all the Greek demigods, veterans, and newbies coming with a sword, saying that there we were go- Hey, newbies, we're going on a field trip. A field trip as in a major battle, you know, that, you, that might depend the world's, you know, a field trip that, well, it kind of, the world kind of depends on that field trip. If they don't win this field trip, the entire world will fall, so cheerful thoughts in that. And together they go and they try to find Meg. And meanwhile, the bomb... Well, the bomb has been disabled, thank to God. But then, of course, Nero has a plan B. He has death gas thing that's gonna flood the entire tower except the top floor where he and Meg and all the rest of his team is. And it will kill everyone, and it, that's literally the entire Greek camp. And that's really, really not good. So what Lester does, he runs, he runs up, and she goes there, and she confronts Nero. And of course, it's kind of useless, because he's immortal. But then, Nico comes in, riding a skeleton of a huge monster bull. And he, and he uses the bull to destroy things, and he duels a couple of wolf swordsmen. And basically... It's a pretty epic thing. Problems start because Nero's still immortal. Then Rachel Elizabeth there comes in with the fusses, the fusses, with the thing, and with Lou. How did how did they get it again? Well, Lou gave her immortality that she had gotten from Nero to. In, in order to exchange for the facets, because they had to give up an immortal life in order to get in order to get that facets, the the power of Nero. So basically, they got it. And there's this really awesome scene where Nero tries to grab it, but Lester hell hold, holds it, and Lester says, and Nero said, "You cannot take it, Lester," and. And of course, and of course, Lester goes. I am the Ap I am Apollo, the god of the sun, and I deny your immortality. And he breaks the facet, and Nero dies. Epic finale. We can think of that as a movie. But the problem is, Python is still alive, and he can literally control prophecy, which means you know he might he can control the future. You know, which is really, really bad. And we need to take Python down. And with his bow and a and two quivers of arrows, he goes down Lester alone and hurt into the depths, and he fights Python. Now he uses all his arrows; it doesn't work, and he drops his bow. He drops his bow into the void, and he's feeling pretty hopeless. And he has nothing within him left. He's and he's not Lester, he's not Apollo, he's the middle of that. Lester tried to turn into a god. 
and he can't do anything. And Python controls prophecy, so he says, Apollo will fall. And before he could finish his sentence, Apollo um, nails him, and Python couldn't finish the sentence, and they fight. And then, the Grove of Dodona makes its final sacrifice. It says, shoot me into Python's eye. Throw me into Python's eye. And I will complete the prophecy. And he says, and it says, with all its might, completes the last line of the prophecy. Apollo will fall, but he must rise again. And the arrow hits Python, and Apollo and Python together falls into the void. And they fall down, 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 down into the underworld. And in the underworld, they crash into the river Styx, and they they drain down and into the abyss of chaos, where Python is dissolved. And Apollo is about to dissolve when Styx comes to him and says, Well, I told you so. And Apollo agrees. He had been told so. And Styx had made every decision in the real world do destruction to people he loved. And he, he had lost so much. So many people, so many loyal demigods, so many good people had died for him and because of him, and he was about to be dissolved. But, Styx says then, well, did you learn? And Apollo, he thinks that he actually, he starting to think he learned something from this, that no matter how holy oaths you swear, it doesn't matter what kind of oath it is or how you swear it. The, the thing is, the thing that really matters is that you fulfill that oath, that promise, whether it was on the river Styx or anything else in the world, you fulfill that oath. And Apollo finds out, and he finally pulls himself away from chaos. Two weeks later, he wakes up in Mount Olympus, a god Apollo again. And he comes back into his full glory, and then he visits some friends. He visits Meg, who is doing good, with, with literally a band of superpowered dryads to guard him, and guard her, and she's have, living the good life. Camp Health Blood, everyone's doing really, really good. She goes to he goes to visit Piper McLean, who's starting a new life in Cherokee Land, and he goes to Camp Jupiter, where she meets Hazel and Frank, who are doing excellent jobs as Praetors. And she also meet, he also meets Annabeth and Percy, being, finally becoming a college freshman in the city of New Rome, where they are safe from monster attacks. And there and there, everything wraps up, and finally, the trials of Apollo, that was so hard and odious, and And it was probably one of the best books that I've ever read. And the thing is that I really want to say is the fact that, wow, Apollo, like, Apollo is a god. He's a god who turned into a mortal and turns back into a god again in the end of this book. And I was pondering, if I was Rick Riordan, how, Rick Riordan, how would I finish the series? And Really, I had no idea, but the way that I kind of expected, like, Lester making the choice of staying as mortal for a while, and saying that, Dad, Zeus, I don't need that immortality anymore, I can stay as a mortal at least for a while. I thought, I kind of expected that, and several other different endings, but how Riordan finished it, opposed a god, but he understands what being human feels like how good it is, and it how it how it influences his decisions, and I just feel like he made a really perfect ending that no one else except Rick Riordan could have come up with, and it was such a great bug, and yeah, first review of this book on YouTube, of course. I I'm a little bit late, but literally spoiler alert for the entire book. It is one of the best books I have ever, ever read, as I have numerously repeated. And like always, your bookquester, Erin the Bookquester. 
You guys are a little too slow. I mean, come on. It got released in Korea only a couple days ago, much later than America. Guess who's read it in a day? Well, great bug Rick Riordan, the end of the stories inside the world of Percy Jackson, or is it? Can we expect an Estelle Jackson series from Rick Riordan? Maybe that's asking too much, but still, great book. Definitely read it, although I'm sure you already read it. Come on. 